What is going on, everybody? It's Alice coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to be celebrating the two year anniversary of Hail Mary Sports with a seven round mock draft. Yes, it's a day late. Whoop de doo. I wanted to make sure that this was done right and that we could not have to rush this to you guys. So if you guys are new, like, comment, and subscribe. It's been one hell of a journey getting to know every single one of you. Big shout out to my boy Camo Wolf, who was one of the first people to ever go back and forth with me on a mock draft. Of course, he was one of the first OG subs, and thank all of you guys who are also true OGs. Let's get right into the video because, honestly, a long intro is no need. It's no fun. So let's start off with the AFC North here. Start off with the Pittsburgh Steelers. If you guys see anything in bold, that means there was a trade. Feel free to ask me what the trade details are down in the comment section below because that would be a pain in the ass to upload. That's okay. I want to make sure you guys know. So we traded a 1-1 one, one, and I believe a 3 for this pick number 8 with the Falcons. And we end up getting Malik Willis. Again, he started falling. And again, this team doesn't honestly need that many pieces to it. So given the value that we got, we got a couple of DBs here. And Nick Cross and Kobe Bryant that will probably both start day one. Uh, I have a second round grade on Nick Cross. He is a 71.0 overall grade, which is a plus has some technicality issues, but man, you look at his IQ, his instincts are top notch. Chris Paul, a good depth at guard. And then you got Jarrett Stearns, which just kind of feels like a Steelers pick at this point. Ryan Van Denmark taking a shot, some tackle depth. Baltimore Ravens are next. You start off with George Karloftis, Tariq Woolen, like we did last time. Move Cole Strange up to 376 because, you know, Cole Strange is actually pretty damn good. You can use him as a guard. You can use him as a center as well. And this team is looking for a long-term answer there. doesn't need to start immediately. Jesse Lucada, again, going back to that Penn State route, being able to develop edge rushers that are extremely raw. Obviously, Michigan defensive coordinator is there now who has been able to develop David Ojabo. I think that that is a good spot to be able to Address that linebacker position while also getting an edge rusher. Thomas Booker, a super high upside interior defensive lineman as well. Then we went for some more speed on the boundary. So Kalen Barnes and Tariq Wollin, the two fastest dudes at the combine, are now going to be on the Baltimore Ravens. We all know that Manda Man is probably going to be extremely important to this team. And the injuries that continually happen in the Ravens secondary, well, now you have guys that at least can keep up with NFL receivers and Justin Ross just being able to take a shot on a guy of his caliber in the fourth round, not bad. Grant Calcaterra did that last draft too. We actually got him later this time. I think he'd be an amazing focal point of the offense in case of injury, or you can just put him in there to be able to be a big slot. Abram Smith is one of my favorite dudes in the draft, former linebacker as well. And he is able to, he's just a baller, man. I don't know why people don't talk about him enough. He's a really damn good running back who's still figuring it out, but this is a place to figure it out. Then Tyrese Robinson adds in depth to the offensive line. Bengals, we traded back at the beginning of the first, ended up getting Kyler Gordon. Uh, yeah, just nobody good was there. So I wanted to make sure that we actually got a potential cornerback one. And given the lack of depth in this class of guys who can actually start, I felt a lot more comfortable with Kyler Gordon at 235 than potentially missing out on Martin Emerson at the end of the second. And unfortunately, Martin Emerson was there. But again, we lacked center. There were no interior defensive line prospects. So we had to go for those at a different point, even though Dylan Parham in the third round is an absolute steal to be able to grow under Ted Cross. Greg Dolchez is going to be a big playmaker there as well. And you guys see the rest, honestly, uh, if you guys have any questions on these dudes, Zach Tom also is a center, but he played left tackle this year. Quinterio Cole, I'll, I'll mention him. Uh, he's an absolute baller. So I actually got to go with media access to the Surf Pro All-American Bowl or Surf Pro First Responders Bowl. There we go. And uh, he was the guy who continued standing out. I had no idea who the hell he was before, but I kept seeing him make play after play after play. I think that he's a very underrated prospect in this draft. Could be one of those steals later on. Uh, Browns got to love how the one guy I mentioned here is the guy we take in the sixth, but Arnold Ebiketti is going to be a day one impact. John Mechie. We did John Mechie last time as well. I think he'd be an amazing replacement for Jarvis Landry. Damone Clark. You have time to be able to develop a linebacker as well. Doesn't mean he has to sit out this year, I believe, but even if he does, you're getting a guy for the long run here. Zach Carter is an absolute steal as well. Super versatile and being able to be trained by the best in miles. Garrett is a big plus. Jalen Weidermeyer, God only knows, maybe he can find a way to get back to his 2020 and 2019 form. And then the rest are probably going to be depth guys. Go to the NFC North. The Bears somehow steal Jahan Dotson, my number three receiver in the draft, and Abraham Lucas, who I have a very, very, very early third grade, uh, third round grade on. He has a 69. Nice. Uh, grade on him. And honestly, it's a perfect fit for the Bears who are trying to move Borum into guard. I don't get it. Personally, it's like whatever. But if they're really stuck on doing that, 
I think that'd be an amazing move for them. Kingsley Anagbari is another guy who we've been getting quite a bit, you know, to replace Khalil Mack with a guy with the extreme upside. Tree Castro Fields as well, really good value for 148 and or 548 and then 5 148. There we go. And then, of course, uh, for Spencer Burford, it's not interior defensive lines, interior offensive line. Oops. But um, yeah, Spencer Burford, I believe that's the guy. I- I'm bugging. I'm, I think he's from the senior ball. Um, I think that's the offensive tackle out of UTSA. Not sure. Regardless, doesn't matter. Uh, I think Spencer Burford's an offensive lineman, so that's on me for putting that as IDL. Uh, Dontario Drummond, linebacker as well. Wow. Okay, so I didn't change the positions on this. There we go. That is what I'm like, wait a second. That is tripping me out. My bad. So bottom line, we're good up until the cornerback. Then it's going to be offensive line. Then Dontario Drummond's a wide receiver. Don't know why the hell I didn't change the position things right there but it is the way it is. We did it on the rest of them. So let's continue into the Green Bay Packers. Zion Johnson moving in as a guard. Hopefully we can move Tevin Jenkins, not Tevin, Elton Jenkins, long day, to right tackle. Christian Watson, we actually traded back to get him. So at least we got some extra value right there. Got an extra third rounder. Uh, that was the late third from the Jaguars. Trey McBride as well. Perry on Winfrey, all going to be day one impacts on the roster. Josh Pascal, you need that extra depth in the edge rush and you can play inside or out. Love that. Michael McFadden is the guy that we got pretty much for free because I would have taken Christian Watson at the 28th pick anyways. And then we got, of course, Kyle Phillips, another guy who could be in there situationally, really good worker, really good blocker as well. Max Mitchell, pray to God that he works. He kind of, he sucked ass at the senior bowl, but you know, if Jenkins is there to teach him up, there's a good chance he could develop into a higher end starter. And then Velas Jones, Jack Jones, Joseph Corker, all going to be situational dudes. Detroit Lions, you got Kayvon Thibodeau, even though it's like Dan Campbell doesn't like him. Honestly, I I don't know if I buy into that. I don't. Because, again, this is smokescreen season, so I'm not exactly sure uh, that people are, like, actually going to be spewing out the truth. I do think Kayvon Thibodeau is the number two player in the – it's not the number two player, but he's worth the number two pick in the draft given the Lions' needs. Uh, Devin Lloyd stole him at the end of the second – or end of the first. Got to love that. Jaquan Brisker, Lewisine was gone, so – had to make sure that Jaquan Brisker was there for us. Jalen Tolbert, you know, when you look at it, you get a large receiver, and that's going to be an A-plus move for this roster to be able to continue making their wide receiver core much better well-rounded. And again, that value is insane. He's number 48 on my board. Carson Strong sticking with it. It's a late third-round pick. You take a shot on a quarterback that has some crazy freaky flashes on tape. Caleb Evans, Eric Ezekama, Zuko McClain. All dudes who can work in the rotation. Jordan Davis, Vikings. We actually traded back with the Eagles, which we'll get to in a little bit. And, uh, I mean, you're still able to get Jordan Davis. So, love that. Oh, yeah, he's going to be a big, big, big situational dude for this roster. I love that. I love that. When you don't have such a huge need at cornerback because Pat Pete's back, when it's not that gaping of a hole, you can at least spend it on the actual best player available. Jordan Davis could just become, like on the Rams, coach from the Rams, uh, he could be the next Aaron Donald if he ends up panning out and continuing to develop. Dylan Pitchery as well. I have him graded actually as an 83 overall, which is, uh, it's like top five in the class, which is ridiculous. Of course, I understand positional value. So to me, he's worth a late first round pick. Guy is absolutely phenomenal overall. Big fan of Dylan Pitchery here. I feel like he's very similar to the way I saw Elijah Molden. Maybe like not exactly step for step with Elijah Molden, but might be a bit more athletic too. So very intriguing prospect there. You can use him in the slot, but you can, I think he has that versatility to go back to safety. Regardless, we got Brandon Smith here, which is an absolute steal for the roster. I think that that would be an amazing fit for Anthony Barr's replacement, Josh Williams. So we got that as a third round pick when we moved back with the Eagles and we used that free pick on an actual cornerback. And I love Josh Williams, man to man type of dude. Great to work under Pat Pete. Uh, Fayetteville State kid. He was absolutely, uh, he was absolutely balling out at the Senior Bowl. So being able to get him would be an A plus move. Dominique Robinson, uh, you know, another situational pass rusher for you. A lot of these guys actually were the same. It's just funny. I don't look at this when I make my mocks, right? Like I just did a seven round mock, and it was like, oh shit. <laughs> a lot of these guys are the same. So you know, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see where they go again as well. But Brad Hawkins as well is a steal at that point. Let's go to the AFC South here, Jacksonville Jaguars, being Aiden Hutchinson, then moving up for Tyler Linderbaum. Yes, that's what we did with the Packers. I think that losing Linder is a kind of a big loss and being able to get arguably the best center prospect that I've ever seen. I think he's the best interior line, interior offensive line prospect since Quentin Nelson. We'll get to that another time. 
but I think that's pretty damn good value. Alec Pierce, I mean, you guys know me. He's my number 25 guy in the draft. Getting him at 365 is ridiculous. Troy Anderson, you lost out on Miles Jack. You get one hell of a leader and a day one impact in Anderson. And then the rest are going to be more situational pass, uh, situational, blah, 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 situational players. There we go. I see, I like, I saw an edge in my head and I was like, pass rusher. Got to love life, right? Uh, but Caesar Williams got to shout out my buddy right there. He would be an absolute baller uh, defensive back for this squad. Super versatile guy. He's just a six year senior. So Indianapolis Colts are next. George Pickens fell. So we nabbed him up, getting an actual true wide receiver one next to Michael Pittman. The height there is going to be pretty ridiculous. Nicholas Petit Ferrer, again, another A plus faller to us, being able to fit in at left tackle immediately and being able to move to right tackle in case of injury. Alante Taylor fits perfectly. Now you have Stephon Gilmore there. Now you can also have Rodgers and now Taylor like that. Kate Auten as well. You know, it's just pretty solid value. Zia Thomas, Cordell Flott as well, getting guys who can play a role. Texans going Ikem Kwanu. Yes. So he goes as tackle one off the board, not because he might be the best tackle, but because he might be the best tackle for the Texans. So I have Evan Neal higher. Regardless, I still think Ikem could, if he has to play guard while Titus wants to move to tackle, or he can play tackle. Bottom line, your run game was 32nd in the NFL last year, leading rusher Rush, Rex Burkhead. You'll see that there's a pretty common theme here. So, yeah, we got a guy who can absolutely just totally morph your run game. Jermaine Johnson, day one impact at edge rusher, Daxton Hill. You know, and you lost Justin Reed. That's pretty damn step for step replacement. Kenneth Walker coming in, adding into that running back room. Cam Taylor Britt, great in zone too. You know, I think that's a day one fit in a off and the defense that doesn't need super high level corner play to be able to be effective. Uh, Thayer Mumford, again, getting that guard depth. You know, you don't, you never know. You can never complain about that. Kevin Austin Jr. took him last time, six foot two, crazy athlete. Kyron Williams took him last time as well. You know, you're getting extra assistance in that backfield. Nephi Sewell, you know, the rest are going to be more situational guys, but all of them can play their own specific role. Titans going Tyler Smith. I know people hate this pick, but honestly, he's going to be such a baller at guard, and I don't care about the criticism. Like, I know you guys might not like it, but again, this is my mock draft, and I do believe one, Tyler Smith's going to go in the first, uh, especially to a team that needs a guard and a tackle. He's going to go in the first. Uh, but I think that he's just, there's, not, there's something special. I actually didn't change the positions on this one either. It's been a day. Uh, but yeah, Tyler Smith is going to be offensive tackle slash offensive guard. Do love Tyler Smith. Darian Beavers is actually a linebacker as well. Third round linebackers, Titans. You got to do what you got to do. Um, Bailey Zappi, quarterback, obviously. But yeah, I think he fits perfectly with what the scheme is. Danny Gray, wide receiver. Happy to see that matchup. Josh Job, adding some corner depth. Never wrong. Van Valkenburg, love him. I honestly do. And Charlie Kohler, tight end, adding into that depth. Now let's continue on to the next team in the NFC South. That is going to be the New Orleans Saints, starting with Trevor Penning, Chris Olave. So both of those guys are going to be day one impacts on the roster, going to start immediately. Des Ritter can actually challenge for the quarterback job. It's a second round pick. I don't know why people hate spending a second round pick on a quarterback, because if it works, you don't even have to spend a future first or a multiple first to get a guy of your choosing. You actually have your guy for the future. Don't really get that because again, you're taking a shot on somebody who can absolutely change your franchise at a very, very low cost. Khalil Shakir as well, going to add some good shake and bake to that wide receiver room. Isaiah Spiller, kind of having your Latavius Murray at the backfield. Isaac Taylor Stewart, good depth, as well as Noah Ellis. Yeah, now Tampa Bay Buccaneers, my favorite guy, arguably pound for pound in the draft. Just funny because he weighs a lot. Travis Jones, um, we actually did not, we, I accidentally didn't do the position of this one either. Life is good, right? Um, yeah, Travis Jones is an interior defensive lineman out of Connecticut, 328 pounds at 13% body fat. Dude is an absolute mauler. I love him. Sean Ryan, guard slash tackle out of UCLA, going to be able to play immediately where Ali Marpet slash uh, wherever the hell Shaq Mason is not. Uh, Jelani Woods, super upside tight end, uh, best RAS score ever at the tight end position, held for 20 years. Jerome Ford, running back out of um, Cincinnati, going to add that nice little juice to the backfield and Kenny Brooks just adding in more depth players. Now let's go to the Atlanta Falcons starting off with Traylon Burks. Yeah, we got it. We kind of got screwed. We did last time we got Jameson Williams at that pick. That would have been a damn dream, right? Fortunately it didn't happen. So what do you want to do? You want to build the guys with the most upside. Traylon Burks is falling because he had a poor 40 guy can't accelerate. That's fine. He can reach a top speed though. So 
I don't really know what people are talking about there. And honestly, you can get the ball in his hands. He's going to truck over a bunch of dudes. There's a lot of upside to Traylon Burks. I don't think people are IDing. Uh, I know no one's going to like this pick, but Sam Howell, I have him as my number 20, I think like 23rd player on my board. Like dude is an absolute baller and he has a good frame, good arm, solid processing. He just needs time to develop into an NFL offense because he wasn't in one last year. So being under, you know, Marcus Mariota is a pretty good start. Drake Jackson as well. I know edge rusher is a huge need. Channing Tindall replacing Foyasada Alukun. Calvin Austin adding some more juice to that receiving room as well. Now you get your speed burner instead of Jameson Williams, you get Calvin Austin. To Marvin Leal, we got that as a free pick, as well as a future first from the Steelers. Remember that? Uh, so we have two firsts next year as well. That's going to be an absolute steal because you get to use them everywhere. Pierre Strong Jr. did it last time. Super upside dude. The rest are situational players. Carolina Panthers, we traded back, and we got a first, a third, and a first from the Los Angeles Chargers and got Kenny Pickett anyways because that's just what was going to happen. I hate to say it. It's what's going to happen. Uh, Jamari Sawyer, I was just trying to do some damage control here. You got Jamari Sawyer, though, to actually play either guard or tackle, whichever one you feel comfortable, Brady Christensen not playing. Matt well, let's go. The rest are actually going to be probably more so depth players, but Tyreek Smith might be able to start where Hassan Reddick was. New England Patriots starting off the AFC East. Wow, I should have just read the slide. But Kyra Elam starting it out with Christian Harris feels like a very Patriots thing to do, getting a lockdown corner as well as an Alabama linebacker with a lot of upside. Wandale is a little bit of a stretch, but at the same time, you're getting someone who you can pass the ball to be the Jalen Waddle to uh, Mac Jones. Matt Lucisa Smith as well. You lost out on Shaq Mason, actually you traded him, and you got that. Braxton Jones, you know, you Southern Utah kid, was able to play guard or tackle. Tyree Johnson did that last time as well. The others are going to be situational dudes. New York Jets, Trevon Walker, Garrett Wilson, Lewis seen all first round picks. All day one impacts, all of them are worth their weight in gold, especially to a team that can develop defensive talent. So yeah, Garrett Wilson, you don't need to develop him. He's ready. Uh, but you got Lewis Seen there who still needs a little bit of development. I still have actually a pretty high first round grade on him. And then Trevon Walker, we all know that he is just the raw tools to be able to build something incredible. Then you got Bernard Ryman still. I mean, that's just an absolute steal. Martin Emerson, even better, right? You get an actual lockdown corner in the third. Then Jeremy Rooker, John Ridgway, Brian Robinson, all going to play their respective roles. Dolphins end up getting Luke Fortner to be their center role. Um, Zamir White to be their power back. Then the rest are going to be situational players. Buffalo Bills going Andrew Booth to start out. And then we got Brees Hall. Yeah, big fan of that one. So you got two day one impacts to fill the two positions. Of course, did not change the positions once again. It's been a long day. Um, but Ed Ingram right there as well, being able to kind of take over for Roger Saffold after a year, David Bell, just getting a dude who's good in space and the rest are situational players. JT Woods at the end is an absolute steal. Washington Commanders going Drake London. Love that commie, uh, that Jersey swap that someone did. Quay Walker as well. Jalen Armour Davis, all filling positions that they can possibly start at. Uh, Chig, just a dude who is an absolute freak of a nature. It's same thing with Kyron Johnson and then Hassan Haskins as well. Cowboys, you got Kenyon Green, Sam Williams, Darian Kennard, all dudes who will start day one. Romeo Dubs even has a chance of being a good deep threat. Pairing up, um, I'm bugging on his name from last year, but the defensive tackle from UCLA with his old buddy, Otito Ogbanya. And then Darion Kendrick did that last time. Same thing with Peyton Hendershot shot too, which is really funny. Adding Caleb Ellaby there for depth. Philadelphia Eagles, yes, we did a lot of trading. Um, not really. We did one trade up and one trade back. Watch it, we did two trades up one trade back, and then the other one was part of that deal. But yeah, we got Kyle Hamilton traded up with the Vikings. Then we got Trent McDuffie. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of it, but at least we traded back. Then we got a second round pick where we got Sky Moore with that one, but we traded up with ours and got Nicobe Dean. Yeah, he fell, and that seems to be a pretty common theme. So, you know, at least get someone who's incredible there. Damian Pierce, Matt Areza being awesome dudes as well having some late round offensive linemen because you develop offensive line like nobody else in the game. New York Giants, Evan Neal, Sauce, Boye, you know, sticking to his power trio. Brian Asamoa, also in my top 25, going to be an absolute steal for you guys. Kirby Joseph lost out on some safeties, being able to replace him and add a third one in there. His A plus move, same thing as Isaiah Likely, Alec Lindstrom. Hell, all these guys actually could be able to play at some point for the Giants. 
San Francisco 49ers, Marcus Jones, we traded up for. Myjai Sanders is going to come in day one. Donovan West, potentially going to start because Alex Mack, Alex Mack is old as hell. Bro McKinley, I know you guys are looking for a safety. And then, of course, the running backs because you're San Francisco. Uh, Seattle Seahawks, Derek Stingley Jr. going to be locking it down all day, every day. Leo Chanel, who's a first-round quality linebacker in my eyes, ends up falling to the 41. Would you get to snag him? Matt Corral, quarterback out of Ole Miss, is what you get. Again, guys, it's a second-round pick. Spend it on a quarterback if you don't know if your guy's the guy. Just take a shot. Again, how many of these second-round picks are going to pan out? Probably like one in every three. And, yeah, that's a pretty high rate, and that's being pretty damn optimistic. So at least if this is the one in three, you have it at the most valuable position. Cam Thomas is a stud as well. Cam Jurgens, love him. Yeah, he's a potential center replacement for you guys. You have, um, I think, so you have Kevin Harris? Somebody like that there for one more year. And, you know, having Cam Jurgens, who has his own beef jerky, would be nice morale boost. Kellen Dice going to start potentially day one as well. The rest are going to be situational players. Rams, all these guys are going to be situational players, except Jack Sanborn, who's one hell of a damn good player. Tyre Carter, one of my favorite dudes in the draft. Cardinals, Devontae White, need help on that interior. Nick Benito, I mean, obviously, still need help on the boundary right there. Uh, Bo Melton, you know, again, kind of like that replacement for the guy who just got paid $17.5 million a year, Christian Kirk. Uh, Jason Corbin, going to be a nice one-two punch there with James Conner. Josh Thompson, like the rest are going to be depth players. Now kicking it off to end off the video, you got Jameson Williams being traded up by the Kansas City Chiefs with the Eagles. Love that for them. Uh, David Ajabo, again, you're now just taking a shot on someone who could be a long-term option for your franchise. Roger McCreary, you need to address that cornerback position in some way, shape, or form. It's a really good guy to do it with. James Cook, adding some more juice to that backfield. Uh, Doman, Fale, going to be both guys who are more situational guys. And the rest are more depth pieces that will support their main roster dudes. Now, Chargers, we traded up. We gave a lot to get a starting right tackle because I think that is more paramount than getting maybe a wide receiver because even getting Reggie Roberson would be a nice depth piece with Jalen Guyton there. Uh, Mario Goodrich going to be able to step into that corner room as well and help out. DeMarco Jackson, you need help at linebacker, and he is a day one impact. Amari Barno, 4-3-7-40, you know damn well that putting him behind Khalil Mack is going to be a good start. Then we are going to be going to the Raiders and, well, nothing exciting. We have Ferry and Mathis, who's going to be a day one impact. Mikhail Wright, who's going to be also a day one impact. Then we got some crazy athletes and a Sezi, and then I believe Rashid as well. Then Luke Wattenberg adding in a center to end it off because you can never go wrong. With offensive line, let's end off the video with the Denver Broncos, starting off again with Chad Muma. But we addressed the corner position with a six foot two, I think he's like 200 pound Zion McCollum who ran, he tested out his mind, needs some help in terms of polishing, but the pieces are there. Logan Hall was a damn steal. I couldn't let him pass up. Uh, Toro Bernard, also a really damn good player. So we're starting out heavy on defense. Jake Ferguson coming in to play a day one impact. Loved him at the senior bowl. Brian Cook, again, BPA. Jeremiah Moon, again, situational dude. Same thing with Leon O'Neal. And then Keontae Ingram, of course, it should be 7 234, not 6 234. That is going to be the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your comments down in the comment section below. See you on the far side. Peace.